In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can apply effects to events within Studio One 3. Now, uh, if you're watching this and you're new to Studio One, then the events are simply these objects that we see here. I've, these are two audio events, and this is a MIDI part, technically, but it can also be called a MIDI event as well. Uh, keep in mind that we cannot add effects to MIDI events, only the uh, audio events here. And these two audio events are actually the same audio clip or the audio, they're the same audio file, but I did drag them in separately. And that's going to be important to keep in mind as we move along here. So let's go ahead and get started with this. If I F7 and bring up the effects tab in the browser, I've already got my personas effects showing here. And before we even get to bringing that in, let me just go ahead and play back uh, these two tracks to hear how it sounds before we get to processing. Okay, so as you can hear, these are both exactly the same. They're dry. Uh, if I we can apply effects to the tracks by dragging. I'll bring in this analog delay. And then you can see on the screen that it says add effects on channel. So we're adding it to the whole channel. And then if I go ahead and play back again. So we can hear that that um, effect is applied to the whole channel and both of these separate audio events. And we can see that visually by F3 to open up the uh, console here. And if I open up the panel for the audio track above, we can see that the analog delay is here and applied to the whole track. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that and F3 to close out the console. I'll bring the effects back up. Now, if we would like to apply that analog delay to just one of these events, then what we would need to do is just uh, simply hold down Alt on our keyboard and then drag this. And now we're adding it to the specific event. And we can even select multiple, multiple events in the range view and then drag an effect onto uh, multiple events at the same time. But we've just added it to this one event here. If I go ahead and play back, we'll hear our dry event and then move on to the processed. And so how can we, if, if I F3 and bring up the mixer again and we come to our audio track, we can see that the insert is not listed here within the panel. So how can we access it if we want to try some different uh, presets or make some adjustments to the parameters? Well, we have this visual aid here that says effects. And this gives us an idea of what events actually have effects applied to them. And it also allows us to click and then access our analog delay that we've brought in. So that's one way that we can do that. I'll go ahead and close out the browser and F4 to bring in the inspector. Now, while I have this event selected with our effects applied, we can see here in the bottom that we have event effects. If I select the first one, um, let's try that again. We don't have any effects here and we have the option to enable. If I come back to the one that we applied the delay to, then we can see I've got limited real estate on the screen here. So pardon the low resolution. I'll drag this up a bit. And this one down. Okay. Now we can see our analog delay is here and applied to, this is the name of our audio event, as we can see here. And we can double click to access our effect there as well. And if we use this arrow, we have other options. Edit will reopen again. And 
expand, rename, bypass, favorite, store preset, or remove. We could also come to the plus here and add other effects if we would like. And if we click this one, we can come to uh, effects chains that are already set up within Personas Studio One. A couple other options that are available to us that are available to us are this little icon here. We can choose to uh, process the volume after event effects if we're having any issues with uh, level after adding our effects in here. We can also render down because these effects are being processed in real time. So if we'd like to save on CPU processing, we can click the render button here uh, and render that down. So actually, I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to play this back because I want to show you something here about the uh, another option that we have when we're rendering down. If I Now, now you can hear that um, stops kind of abruptly. That delay, it's cut off, and it, it sounds kind of nasty. So if I control Z and undo that render, we have this field here for a tail. And we can add an amount of time to render down so that we can catch the delay or any reverb that may be playing beyond this audio event. So then if I come in and put, say, four seconds, I'll hit enter, and then let's re-render that down. Then you can see we've got much more included in that bounce down audio. And if I go ahead and play back here, Now that's a hell of a lot cleaner so keep that in mind that that is available and we can use the restore here to come back to um, our original settings and that's just another option beyond using uh, undo or control Z and I'll go ahead and drag that back now if we'd like to add effects by using the inspector here I'll select this first unprocessed event, and then we can see we have event effects. If I choose enable, then we can come down to these menus that we took a look at a moment ago and access all of our effects here, as well as our effects chains. And something else to keep in mind when you're working with event effects is that if I press D on the keyboard and duplicate this event, the effect is going to follow. And if I click this icon here, we can see that the analog delay is included in that duplicated copy. So if you would like to add another one of these events, whatever that audio event is, you need to go to your browser and then find that audio file and then drag an additional copy in so that the effects won't be included when you duplicate here. If we'd like to clean up this little events area here, we have this arrow that we can click to fold that up. And the last thing that I'd like to mention about working with event effects is just to keep an open mind when you're working with these and we don't, you know, get a little creative and we don't have to just stick with applying an effect to an event just because it's already, uh, you know, this whole part here. We could actually let me come in and I'm going to remove that delay and take this back to take that back and if I select here let me turn snap off and I'm going to press 3 to bring up the slice tool and I'm going to cut that there bring back the arrow tool and then now
I'll put this analog delay on this very last portion of the event and let's hear how that sounds. And actually, I think something that would be even better is to take this room verb, place it on the whole track, So you can see what we're getting at here. That just needs a bit more volume on the end, but I think it actually sounds a bit cleaner and more... Um, I don't know, it just sounds a bit better to having that delay on that very tail end there versus the whole audio event. So I hope that you picked up a couple of ideas here and thank you for watching.